Christ is going to appear. Christ is coming. The people who don't have salvation, there is nothing they're looking for. There's no glory. It's not a glorious appearance for them because Christ will come for them as a judge. But for those who have salvation, and the salvation the heart flows through their mouth, affects what they listen to, affects what they say, affects what they seek about, affects what they plan, and the salvation affects what they imagine to do. And the salvation affects their feet where they go in the night. Those people, they're looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Then in verse 14, it says, Who gave himself for us? Who gave himself for us? Do you think you understand that? Jesus Christ gave himself for us. And as we come and believe in him, he gave himself to us. He deposits something from his life. He deposits something is very blood in our life. That becomes a little magnet inside you. And he is the great magnet over there. And as magnet attracts magnet, when he appears in the air, for the people who have him, because he gave himself for them, he gave himself to them, the magnet above will magnetize the people that have him living in them up to heaven you go. I'm looking at you, you are going to heaven. And he says, and that he might redeem us from all iniquity. It doesn't leave us struggling, struggling, and trying by ourselves to be free from iniquity. He does that for us because he gave himself for us. He gave himself to us, and now he redeems us from all iniquity. And to purify unto himself a peculiar people. When you have Christ, he makes you a peculiar person. Peculiar. What are they? Peculiar. <laughs> Those who are peculiar. I say, what are they? You know, you ought to be happy in your life that the Lord sets you apart peculiar. And all the, all the cockroaches and the rats and everything that, that crawl on common people, when the cockroaches, the cockroaches, when they look your direction, they say, it looks like there's some peculiar there. I can't, they cannot go there. All those serpentine spirits, they walk here, they walk here, they crawl there, and they crawl on almost everybody, and then there you are. You might be in the village, you might be in the tiny where, but when those uh, serpent spiritual, when they come, ah, this one is peculiar, I cannot go there. A failure is traveling about everywhere. And every town and every village and every community failure goes there, failure goes there, goes there. But you, will failure come to you? I 
am peculiar. Say it out aloud. Because he purifies unto himself. He purifies you. The washing liquid from heaven, the blood of the Lamb, has come your way and washed you, your peculiar. And zealous of good works. The people out there, they are zealous of evil works. Those who have not received Christ, they are zealous of bad works bad works you'll be different from today because you become so peculiar that all those evil works you don't even have any interest in them after you are born again after you are saved after your sins are forgiven and somebody who did not know that something has taken place that makes you peculiar. What do you say, friend? Where have you been? I see you. And then they open their, you know, boss, whatever, and they offer a stick of cigarette. And you are looking at them. Uh uh. What's happening to you? Take now. We used to do it together. When I was like you, we used to do it. But now I am peculiar. Any peculiar man there? That thing, well, not, you're not even have interest in it anymore in Jesus' name. That's the salvation foretold by the Lord. And in Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 9, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lordship of Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. In verse 10, verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with your mouth you confess, and that confession is made unto salvation. Tonight, at your belief in Christ, Yes, I am the candidate for salvation. And you confess with your mouth. Your salvation has come today. Amen. Amen. Number two. Number two, we're looking at full salvation by the perfect Savior for godliness. full salvation what do you have tonight what do you have tonight let me hear you let heaven hear you that full salvation will put joy in your heart laughter in your mouth will put excitement to live in your life you know, sometimes you ask a young person, are you sluggish like this? Do you want to live? Do I want to live? I don't know whether I want to live or not. Why? He doesn't see anything to live for. But today, when that full salvation comes to you, you say, Lord, even if I wanted to die before, I don't want to die again. I want to live. And you will leave. I said, you will leave. Uh, look at Luke chapter 1, verse 74. 
in Luke chapter 1, verse 74, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Why didn't some people, why did they want to live? They look to the right, there's something to fear. They look to the left, there is someone to fear. In the people, around the people, we were them, there's somebody to fear. Somebody is a student, there's something he's afraid of. This other fellow is a teacher, and he has, you know, command there. And yet, as a teacher, there's something to fear, even in this school. This one is poor and a peasant, and he has something to fear. This other one is a director, is a captain. He's far above the rest of the people, but the captain has something to fear. The rich has something to fear. The educated has something to fear. And now Christ comes to you and he says, can I help you? Can I take all your fears away? So that you live your life without fear. He will do it for you tonight. If the lion of the tribe of Judah any roaring lion in your community, Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah, will kind of drive all that roaring lion away in Jesus' name. Yeah. So he said, the reason why he came is that he will grant unto us that we will be delivered out of the hand of our enemies and might serve him without fear look at verse 75 in verse 75 in holiness and righteousness what's the connection what is the connection serving without fear in holiness and righteousness before God all the days of our lives. You know, the people will fear, they're the people that hinder us from living in holiness. They're looking at us, we're looking at them. They want to stand up. The man is looking at you, the woman is looking at you, and then you begin to consider what are they thinking, what are they up to, and how, how are they going to judge if I stand up? Therefore, you sit down. If I open my mouth and I talk about Christ, and I say, Jesus is my Savior. How will this man think? How will this woman think? And what will they do? And because I fear them more than I love my destiny, because of them, I cannot be holy. But when he when he sets us free from every enemy, and what you want to do, you have the liberty and the freedom and the grace to do whatever they think, whatever they do, and whatever they might speak out against you. You are free from those enemies because of that. Not no string tying you down, and nothing holding you down because of that. You live in holiness and righteousness before God all the days of your life. In verse 76, 
it says, and thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. Verse 77, and to give the knowledge of salvation. You have the knowledge of salvation. You have accepted that knowledge of salvation. You live in that knowledge of salvation. And now you go to pass it on to other people. Today, as you get saved, and this knowledge comes to you. Everywhere you go, you will pass on the knowledge of salvation. Give a good, good amen. By the remission, the removal, the forgiveness, the cleansing of their sins. In Acts chapter 4 verse 12, Acts chapter 4 verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other. And he's so close by, Jesus is our Savior. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And there's no salvation in any other. You can go to the mountain top. You can fast for 40 days. There is no salvation on the mountain. You can go into the body and rub yourself with dust. There is no salvation in that dust. You can go to River Jordan and drink as much water you want to drink from River Jordan. There is no salvation in that river. Only one. One savior. Only one. One redeemer. Only one. One deliverer that delivers us from sin. There is salvation in no other. And as you come to Christ and you say, yes, Lord, I believe you are my Savior, salvation comes to you tonight. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Call on him tonight and your salvation is definite. You'll be saved tonight. I am saved tonight. I am saved tonight. I see Christ smiling at you and saying, Tonight, you are the person I will save you. Heaven is smiling at you. And he says, Come, I will give you salvation. We're looking at number three. Number three is final salvation in the powerful Savior before glory. That's the salvation that transforms us and translates us from earth to heaven. Glory in your life today. Amen. Amen. Glory in your heart today. I see God opening the book of life. I see him having the heavenly pen in his hand right now. And he's going to write the names of those who will come to him in glory. And I see Jesus looking down at everybody. And it's by the side of the Heavenly Father. 
and the people who surrender, the people who give their lives to the Lord, Jesus says to the Father, that's him, a believer, he just raised up his son now, and from all his heart he believes, Father, write his name, and he writes your name. My name is written there. My name is written there. On the pages white as snow. My name is written there. Congratulations tonight. I rejoice from the depth of my heart for you. That your name will be written in the book of life. And you will get to glory. I said you will get to glory. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10. It says, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation. How do we stay in the rain? We endure the rain so that the elect will obtain salvation. How do we come? Already the rain was coming. Was You knew the rain was going to fall. You still left your house and you came. Why? Because you endure all those things. I'm going to be there tonight. I'm going to get the blessing tonight to obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Without wasting time, your salvation has come. Forgiveness has come. Eternal life has come. Heaven is about to rejoice because of you. And the Father is about to write down your name so that you will be a partaker of the glory that will be forever and ever and ever. Look at that verse, eternal glory. Let's bow and eyes closed. The Lord is about to write the names of those who believe on Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. He wants to forgive your sin, raise up your hand. He wants to write your name in the book of life, raise up your hand. He wants you to turn from sin and turn to the Savior, you raise up your hand. He wants to turn you from darkness unto light. And you want that too, so you raise up your hand. As you are raising up your hand, you will stand up. You will stand out from everybody around. Because you want to be this peculiar person that your sins are forgiven, your sins are forgotten, and the grace of God comes into your life, and you are preparing now for glory for heaven. Stand up, we are praying together. Tell the Lord, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then we'll pray for you. I turn away from all my sins and I believe that Jesus is my Savior. You're right, so praise up your hand. We're praying together. Heavenly Father, we thank you. God of love, God of mercy, God of grace, the God who has prepared salvation for us before we even came here. We exalt your name. Adore your name. 
in your mercy, look at your people, they're standing up, they're raising up their hands, and they want this salvation with eternal life. Save them in Jesus' name. Forgive their sins that there will be no remembrance of any of their sins anymore in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, you told those disciples, rejoice because your names are reaching in heaven. All these people, in your mercy, by your grace, write their names in the book of life. Bring the joy of salvation into every heart. And give them the grace now they are delivered from every enemy. And so they go forth living in holiness and righteousness before you all the days of their lives. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, you are saved. I am saved. Say it for yourself. I am saved. It's done in Jesus' name. Our national overseer will come and lead us in this session of counseling. After that, remember, rainy day is a rainy day. Miracle will reign in your life. You are saved. That is the greatest thing you can have in this world. The counselors you move into the congregation and make sure that right particulars are taken concerning people who have decided for the Lord tonight. All those who are connected to the program all over the world, wherever you are, get the particulars of those who have decided for the Lord. And the decision makers, make sure you give the right name, the right phone number. Make sure that all the particulars you are giving are true because you have come to Christ the truth. And all those who are writing, please write legibly so that we'll be able to read after the cast gets to us. Sanso na monso a mochre wo mudini, monshe se, enchre ye no muno, mobe chre me mua da hobi biya ye kamana ye tini ye funu wong ye. If you are watching online, and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening. There's a link, gckhq.org slash connect, displayed on your screen. Please visit the link and fill out the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, so a be an eye, a bear funty tank, see so internet, and many are dinner with ye now. So do one may radia or shall we feed in a sea link be a honum gckhq dot org slash connect. But more than a say, what nam so de bay a message at your brain near who know baby our war near to me do a cheer. Our goal is to help you to 
be established in Christ. It's not enough to raise up your hand. You have to continue in the decision, continue in the faith, so that you become a disciple of Christ indeed. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and just gave your life to Christ, please send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus 234-915-444-9263. Sanso na wansu wutie, na wutie ni wo radio so anase TV suwa. Na wadi wuhuwa me radia, saan namba mi buboyi, ba mwadi nefa namba na nama ye hunu wa chikwain, we be WhatsApp and I say video the brain we WhatsApp number no nie plus 2349154449263 Now there will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ from the start of this program to take place on the 4th of August. Sansona, do do amu wo abai fun tintan kese so ye internet so na mutie crusade de Muhammad Radia ne beto pon kese de amam ye nyina ye se ye twemu aban Christo na no no ebeba so 4th August. All over the globe you get to the nearest Deeper Life Bible Church, or if you came from another place and your card is with the pastor, please make sure that you attend the program for be, for you to be taught, to be able to continue with the Lord. Enti bra watin kaiboi na wehu ndako se ibe shiano, but more than say, what do you hope she do me die mu ebi? In the Alpha location here, all Deeper Life Bible Church churches. Around the nation, I mean the nation or the region, Ashanti region, make sure that you attend that banquet. It is Yabo Dana Sosa, a year that a tosso and nine, but more than a say, Sir Muamu Wokumaseha, Ashanti Memuha, any or my Mafana baby, and a Dani Dura, Miami, a year, Sapono, S.U.S.C., Sunday, and a moment more than say a Babua Moana. Right from the start of this GCK, all those who have given their lives to Christ, we always meet them by 3 p.m. at the VIP stand. And this will be a special meeting we call Lunch Hour with Jesus for all those who gave their lives to Jesus during this program, Thursday through to today. Please, tomorrow, make sure that by 3 p.m. you are there to be directed which Enka, way to go. And can we come one more? If you say a share, crusade, GCK, Yassia, Yawada, ABC, and Ne. Now, what in Yamia Sam now do on America, dear young Kanjiasano, a Yana, a Brebia, a Ria, no mean Sano, Yeshia, a VIP stand of Apata Cassia Nasa Honum, a young church at the Massa of We. Yadipa bomo watu na siye kristo mu. Ti kwe se, nyami ya aduma ochina. Ubi biyara efri ya wada besi nena wadi huwa mei radi eno. Ubi wadi huwa bebo ebe dom saafu ono akoye saadi suyano. So Alpha Location Believers Banquet will be on Sunday for for guests at Deeper Life Bible Churches all over. All over. All the locations. Get there and you'll be directed as to what to do. 3 p.m. Say a boy, a profoya no, a dead tosu nine, fourth August, he, a dear map of profono, a reset, a yet alpha location, any maybe be a deeper life one, a drew on more, a bebo mano, na yach stretch the one. Please, counselors, let's know whether you have been able to get down the names of the people. A bramo straw, one out of your mama, a radi, a dino, some more we are, baby, a mobiano, Montre and Cra, Munyam, Monsani, and Hunube. Maybe I drew. All over the globe, 
in all nations, make sure that you take proper records of those who have decided for the Lord. And Kaibo Ekoma, baby, be a po we are safe on any na. One aji Christo edi yenge se yebetu mu din yie ne yenya omo ho enche se padi ato ho na omo bi yenge ra. They are so precious to God and to Christ. They should be precious to us. Some some body ma erade nyango pong ne ne doba Yesu e se sa afu Yesu eti mi some body ma yeni. Let's take good care of them. Yenge se omo yie. As the apostles did, and they were able to keep many converts in the Lord, and they are in heaven. Sana sma fu edin kani o ya ma akra do do adu amu me ra de na wamu kra wamu share wamu amu sun bo ma wenti omo timi do do no heaven. Let's know whether you are finished. Timu chuo omu din sa mo wia mon mon tu yen kra mon nyami yen ni yen hunu. Please don't forget those at the top. If you are finished, you can raise up your flag and let me know. Okay, I see one there. Okay. Okay. So, we will hand over to our pastor to come and pray for us. Amen. Amen. I told you at the beginning, a day like this is a special day. A special healing is coming your way. Special miracle is coming your way. Special deliverance for you tonight in Jesus' name. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every disease will bow. Every demon will bow. And all those things that have tormented your life and your body, until this time, when we mention the name of Jesus, you are healed tonight. I am healed tonight. You raise up one hand and lay the other hand upon yourself. Spectacular healing tonight. Special healing tonight. Peculiar healing tonight. Coming your way. Raise up one hand. Lay the other hand while you have the challenge. Father, in Jesus' name. Well, thank you because we know you have prepared healing, deliverance, miracle, signs, and wonders for everyone here without exception. And everyone online, radio, television, special miracle, special healing for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Send forth your healing to everyone now in Jesus' name. With that hands, for our light hands, be made whole right now. Stretch it. You are healed in Jesus' name. Yes. Lame people, paralyzed people, and people having a kind of hook there that you cannot move very easily. Be healed in Jesus' name. Yes. One leg shorter than the other. Lord, I pray that short leg grow out now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hearing problem, those deaf ears, I command, be healed and begin to hear in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
dumb tongue that could not speak, the vocal cord has something wrong with it. I pray the power of the Lord will come on all those people. You hear, you speak out in Jesus' name. Internal sickness also right now at this point in time. Also be healed in Jesus name. <laughs> Cancer at whatever stage, stage one, stage two, stage three or stage four, I send the mighty power of Christ the healer upon your body right now that cancer be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. HIV is the healing of the Lord is coming upon you right now. I pronounce healing upon you, deliverance upon you, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Any kind of sickness in your body? Visible, invisible? External, internal? The mighty hand of God touches you right now. You are healed. You are delivered. Your special, spectacular miracle has now arrived. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Here at the Alpha location, here on the field at the stadium in Kumasi here. To my right, to my left, at the back over there, in the middle, in the front, miracle. Yeah. Healing. Deliverance. Yeah. Online, everywhere. And those over the radio, on the television, healing, miracle, signs and wonders, deliverance in Jesus' name. Right now, performance everywhere. Right now, confirmation everywhere. Thank you, Lord. It is done. Is it said it's done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. You got it. I said you got it. Check up yourself. Your miracle is right there. Amen. Amen. You have got Amen. It's a wonderful scene to be in Ghana, in Kumasi, and ministry with fellow ministers and reaching across the globe. And I pray that this time together will be a time of renewal, of revival, of refreshing for everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we well, thank you. We know that it is not by might, by power, by strength, it is by your spirit. Not by merit, but by your mercy and your grace we're here. And we're asking, oh Lord, you impart into our lives, into our ministries, into our profession, what comes from heaven and the only place it can come from to enrich our lives. Touch everyone this morning. Bless everyone this morning. And make everyone, without exception, a channel of blessing to our generation. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 
Thank you very much, Sida. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 40. And we're reading from verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. It says, As thou known, there's something we didn't know, we're going to know. And then it says, As thou heard, maybe something we've never heard, we're going to hear that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither. You see, weary, there is no searching of his understanding. We cannot dig so deep and go so high and search so wide and know the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of the Lord. He tells us in verse 29, in verse 29, he giveth power. He giveth power. That's why we're here this morning. You are going to have something in your life and in your ministry. The thing you didn't have before, if you were powerless, your day of power has come. If you were weary, your day of strength and refreshing has come. And if you were about like Elijah, there's no point going on. I'm not better than any of my fathers, any of the uh, former prophets. And so let me die. You are about to start a new level of life. Because he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. In Bastachi, it says, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But in Bastachi 1, Bastachi 1, but they that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. They are the people that they will renew their strength. Amen. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Amen. I thought that was only talking to the young people until I realized that, you know, Caleb was even, uh, you know, older than I am. And he says, I'm ready now to start running. And if you're as old as I am, you're younger than I am, the day to start a new height, a new level of this race, that day has come. Yeah. And if you are ready, because I'm still going to keep on running, if you are ready, you run with me. Yeah. If you are ready, you'll climb a higher plane even from everything you did in the past in Jesus' name. Amen. Ghana will be turned completely and fully unto the Lord. Amen. And everyone around you, everyone beyond you, that, you know, they, they say they are all right, but, you know, they are not all right because the fullness of the grace of God has not been registered in them. You are the agent of the Lord, the messengers of the Lord, and you are going to take the fullness of the word of God unto our people here and everywhere in Jesus' name. Amen. And it says, you will run, you will not be weary, you will walk, and you will not faint. Amen. I need a better amen on that one. Amen. You know, when you, sometimes when I was, you know, much younger, and, uh, you know, I taught in the school, second, when I had four periods to teach, and I teach this standing upright on the board, and then I be on the bell rings, and I go to another, by the time I did four lessons, look at me, I would need some rest. But now, after so many years, I preach one, I preach two, I preach three. And then they said, Pastor, we didn't schedule this one, but can you take a fourth one? I said, I'm here, I'm ready. Because now I run and I walk and I preach and I minister and I'm not weary. Yeah. You will not be weary. Your strength will not fail you when you need the strength. Yeah. You will stand. You will walk. You will preach. You will pray. Yeah. And God will answer your prayer. Yeah. 
We started on Thursday. When did we start? Tell me now. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Today is number five. Our people will tell you, but don't tell them. I will tell them myself. When we used to have, we still have retreats, but we used to have Easter retreat, December retreat. And we start, we start on sometimes Thursday, then Friday. By Saturday, my voice is gone. By Sunday, I say, I thank God we're finishing today. <laughs> because my voice has run away from me. My strength has run away from me. Now we're day number five. And my voice said, as long as you want to preach, go on. I have permission from heaven. I have permission from my voice. I have permission from everyone. Go on. Now you have the permission of heaven. You will go on. Amen. You will preach on. Amen. And you will progress. Amen. I said you will progress. Amen. We're looking at the message this, this day. Readiness and renewal for Christ-like penetration in ministry. Not just ordinary penetration. Penetration in ministry. And I'm so happy you are the candidate to penetrate this land. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at renewal and regeneration to be Christ-like in ministry. That's the emphasis, to be Christ-like in ministry. Number two, recreated and recommissioned by Christ for mastery. By Christ for mastery. And, you know, I met uh, one of my, you know, spiritual children uh, recently. And I said, uh, what do you do? He said, I do this. He said, that's not all, Pastor. I do this. I said, that's not all, Pastor. I do this. I looked at him and I said, you do this, you do this, you do that. And you look like an expert in every place. He said, sir, therefore, I heard you. I used to think, jack of all trades, master of none. But you were preaching and you said, John, not Jack now, John of all trades and master of everything. And I took that and I accept that. I said, the old statement, jack of all trades, master of none, all that is gone. Now, I am the John of all trades and master of everything. What you hear today will change your life. Yeah. Will transform your life. Yeah. And so you are recreated and you are recommissioned by Christ for mastery. Number three is refined and rebuilt. You are refined to rebuild what Christ, our master, our model, our maker. He'll do it in your life. Look at number one. Number one, it's renewal and regeneration to be Christ-like in ministry. He wants to make us like himself so that we are Christ-like. And let's look at that again in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, But they that wait upon the Lord. You know, if you learn to wait upon the Lord, you can do a lot that you never thought you could do. You can get to places you never thought you can get to. You can become another man, another woman, another prophet, another preacher, another, another, another pastor. You can become another personality. All it takes wait of on the Lord. And then it says they shall renew their strength. Anytime you feel weak, don't just keep on running. Stay. Stop. 
go and wait upon the Lord. Anytime you feel discouraged, wait and turn to the wait upon the Lord. Anytime some of the old ideas and the weaknesses and the idiosyncrasies of the past, they are coming back. They don't say, why this now? Why this now? I've done this, I've done that, and I'm still like this. Wait. Wait upon the Lord. Renewal will come upon you. A new energy tonic will come into you because they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Is that possible in your life? You will run and not be weary. You will run, you will not be discouraged. You will not be disheartened. You will not say, I can't go on. You will go on. Yeah. I said you will go on. Yeah. Because when you wait upon the Lord and you renew your strength, then you will run. You are running this race that is set before you and you will not be weary. And it says you shall walk. They shall walk and not faint. Well, uh, you know all the scriptures I you know, want to read. I could read them. I could read even more than that. But the point is this. The reason we're waiting upon the Lord. We want to become Christ-like in ministry. Well, how did Christ minister? And if we want to become Christ-like, what are the things that will be in our lives that we will see that now I am Christ-like in ministry. There are seven things I'm going to briefly go, go to. Number one, he ministered without fear of evil. You know, when you wait upon the Lord, and you are renewed in heart, in mind, before you're looking at the faces of the people, I dare not say that because of that person. I dare not go that direction because of that person. Then you realize Christ was not like that. Christ ministered without fear and without favor your day has come Amen. fear taken away Amen. favor do i say that to the sinner do i say that to the believer do i say that to the members of my church what will they say how will they look and how will they handle me today from today you minister like christ Amen. no fear Amen. no favor Number two, your minister will focus on freshness. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, when I was younger, and I, you know, had some preachers, by the time I had them uh, for six months, when they come again uh, and they announce their subject, I know the verse they're going to start with. I know the things they're going to say. I know how they're going to conclude because I've had them for six months and there's no more freshness. And then sometimes you look at a minister, he been preaching and preaching, and you're asking, what's the goal? Because when I was teaching, especially in the primary school, before I came to secondary, before I taught in university, we used to write what we call note of lesson. What is your purpose? What is your goal? By the time I finish this lesson, I expect and I work for the student, my pupils, to get to this, to understand this. Our teachers at school, they have a goal, they have a purpose. And when we came to high school to teach, we had a purpose. We're teaching this because they're going to take external exam. And we want them to do well in that external exam. We come as preachers. And what's your topic today? They give us, we say, what's the purpose? What's the goal? What are you focusing on? And what's the goal? They don't have any goal. And it's just today, Sunday, I have to preach. I just preach. No. Jesus Christ taught and ministered with focus and freshness. Anytime they listen to Jesus Christ, was still fresh because they say, Lord, from heaven to bring to the people. So, as the Lord renews our lives and the Lord transforms us, we minister with focus and freshness. Number three, he minister with firmness and finality. That's how we minister firmness and finality. If this sinner 
never hears any other person preach about salvation, I'm going to let him know this is the way of salvation. And it was final. And they could go anywhere, search anywhere. This message they hear from you has finality in it except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god and you are firm about it nicodemus said how can that be will i enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born jesus said marvel not i say unto you it was still the same thing he was firm about it except you except a man be born except a man 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 people but now you except ye be born again you cannot enter the kingdom of god as a firmness and this is finality except thou repent ye shall likewise perish look at number four number four is that jesus ministered with faith and forbearance faith and forbearance look at all his disciples how they were not united and those will be the greatest among us and he brought a little child and said look at this little except you be like this little child and you're humble you will not get to the kingdom not even to talk about the greatest in the kingdom but you know he ministered to them with faith and he still said they would be the people to preach the gospel to every creature. They were here and there, they were vacillating, they were up and down, but he still had the faith that these are the people. And with forbearance, he forbore with them, he endured with them, he was steadfast with them. He didn't say this a bunch cannot do anything, they'll not achieve anything, brush them aside, drive them away, go back to your fishing, and then get another, no, he stayed with them, and even after he rose from the dead, and Peter had said, I go a fishing, and then they said, we'll go with you, he went to them, still there, when we become Christ-like, that's what we do, we don't give up on people, we don't give up on our members, we don't give up on our neighbors, we don't give up on the people we're supposed to preach the gospel to because we preach with faith and we preach with forbearance. Number five, Jesus Christ preached freely and fully. Hey, come and look at Jesus Christ. Here he was sitting, you know, sometimes he stood when he preached, sometimes he sat when he preached, sometimes he'll be at the boat when he preached. He was free, he was free. He was not tied down. I must always stand up. If I don't stand up, the Holy Spirit, the, the anointing will not flow. I must always sit down. If I don't sit down, I'll not be well rested. And then preach. It was free. Stand, preach. Sit, preach. Look this way, preach. Free. He was free in his mind. He was, he was not tied up. And if we're going to preach like Christ, we must not be bound by tradition. You know, the people expect this is the way I should be. And then when I pray, I should kneel. When I pray, Jonah did not have a place to kneel when he prayed. It was in the belly of the fish. He didn't even know whether it was facing east or facing west. He said, all the things wrapped around me, and yet I would lift my voice unto the God of heaven. I went astray and forsook the way of salvation. Look at where I am now. When you preach, be free. Not frivolous, be free. It's not that you are superficial. Get to the word and let the word come freely out of you. Look at this. He preached fully. He preached fully. He preached fully. Uh, sometimes I listen to preachers and I agree with them partly. And I sometimes say, what do you even say? Because it's the word of God. It's true. Sometimes I tell the sinners, I'll say, come as you are. And people say, wonderful, wonderful. I had the pastor say today, come as you are. But they don't listen fully to the old message. They say, this one is sweet. I agree. It is sweet. Come as you are. Isn't that what he told 
uh, this man, Zacchaeus, come down. Make haste. I must abide in your house today. How was he coming? He was coming as he was. But that's not the end. He came down. And the people said, Jesus Christ went to the house of a sinner. That's who he was. And he came just as he was. But you know, he didn't leave as he was. Give me a good amen. amen. When we preachers tell the people, come just as you are. And the people have an idea. We come as we are. We get saved, we remain as we are. And we're now born again. We're now in the church. We are disciples. They follow us up. And we still keep on living as we were. No, no. Look at your current seat there. I brought one for you to look at. You know, this currency here, we have is 200 in our mission. We have the big six. And that side, if somebody give you currency and you look at that, this is wonderful. But you didn't look at the other side, that the other side was blank. And the Jubilee house is not on the other side. And then you go about, you go about, you want to buy something, you tender your 200, uh, you know, donation. And the person who is going to sell to you is not only going to look at the side you are looking at, is going to look at the front side, is going to is that what kind of currency is this? This side is blank. After you say you come to the Lord and you come just as you are. That's just one side. And then you don't look at the other side, that the other side is black. All oh, you rejoice, I come as I am, I come as I am. And the other side of your currency is black. And then you get to the gate of heaven and you say, what are you coming for? I want to enter heaven and I have the currency to prove that I'm qualified. Bring it up, bring it up. And then you see one side and you see the big six. You look at the other side, totally blank. What are you going to do at that? You cannot change it at that time. That's the reason why you preach freely, but you preach fully. Tell them the whole thing. Hey, look at this woman coming to the Lord. They, they dragged her to the Lord. And they said, Lord, we caught this woman. And we caught her right-handed. She cannot deny what she, did she do? Then they mentioned what she did. And, uh, you know, they said, Moses said, stone such a woman. What do you say? He said, nothing. He wrote on the ground. Sometimes we say, sometimes we write. Sometimes it's what we say that will catch the people. Sometimes it's what we write that will catch the people. And when they saw what he wrote on the ground, they were all convicted and they went away one by one. And um, so Jesus said to the woman, who are those pen accusers? Have they not stayed? No, they didn't say. He says, neither do I condemn you. Everybody help me repeat that. <laughs> God bless you. And then the woman, if she didn't wait, and then sweet, I heard sweet message today. Neither do I condemn thee. He has only one side of the currency. He didn't wait to hear the other side of the currency and goes about and then I'm going to give testimony. You know, the, the things I had before, they were bitter, except thou repent, thou shalt likewise perish. But you know, I've heard a new message now. This one is sweet. Neither do I condemn you. My dear sister, wait. Look at the other side, but now, Tell me the other side. Tell me out aloud. Let everybody repeat that. So don't classify the messages. So say, neither do I condemn you today. The message is sweet. 
and then come just as you are sweet. Look at the other side. Zacchaeus said, half of my goods I'll give to feed the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore for the man did not remain as he was. And then the woman, you're forgiven. You're saved. But go and sin no more. That's the example of Jesus. That's the pattern of Jesus. He preached freely and fully. Number six, he preached frequently and fervently. Preach frequently and fervently. Your heart must be in the ministry. Your mind must be in the preaching. Everything you are doing, your whole concentration must be there. And you do that frequently, actually. When you do something frequently, you master that thing. Do you remember? I would try to write the alphabet, and the teacher will hold our hand. Whoever was trying to teach us how to write the alphabet, and they do it slowly, and we trace the alphabet. And later, we continued, we continued, we continued, and because we keep on writing frequently. That's why, that's how we master the art of writing. And so, we preach fervently, we preach frequently, and number seven, faithfully and fearlessly. If we're, if we're fearful, we'll not be faithful. If we're fearful, what will happen to me? If we're fearful, what will the reaction of the people be? If we are fearful, the people who are in the committee and they appointed me and they, they decided my benefit, my remuneration, my salary, if they are unhappy, what will happen to me and to my family? If we're fearful, we will not be faithful in the preaching of the word of God. But Christ Jesus, the Pharisees were there, the Sadducees were there, and all the, they were watching him to catch a word from him. All the same, he said, everything he ought to have said. And by the time he was going, he said, Father, I thank you. I have finished what you give me to do because it was fearless, it was faithful. And the Lord wants us to be like him. When you wait upon the Lord, it will renew your strength. And then you'll mount up with wings as eagles and you'll be like Christ, you will be faithful. Like Christ, you will be fearless. Amen. And from today, in every part of this nation, and everywhere you go, when you have the privilege, number one, fear is taken away from your heart. Amen. Faithfulness. Amen. Faithfulness. Amen. I'll be faithful. Where are you? The Lord will renew your strength. And everything that brings fear in your heart, the Lord will take away today. We're coming, to, we're coming to number two now. Number two, we're looking at recreated and recommissioned by Christ for mastery. Recreated and recommissioned by Christ for mastery. He wants us to be master of what he has called us to do. He gave them some apostles. The apostle must be fearless and must be a master of the ministry of the apostle. And some prophets, the times, you know, the prophets we have today, they're not like the prophets we had in the word of God. Moses, the prophet, to confront Pharaoh, that was a prophet. And then we have Nathan, Nathan to confront David. And then we have the prophet Micaiah, that Ahab said, he never says any good thing about me. His message is always hard, pinching, pointing. Penetrating. Those are the prophets we need, and those are the prophets that God says to us today. He gives some apostles and some prophets and some 
evangelist. Evangelist is those are the people that go to the regions beyond. They go beyond their local church. They go beyond their local assembly. And evangelist, true evangelist, does not get there and uh, say, now, come, tell me here. What's the culture? What do they want to hear? The other evangelists that have been coming, how do they preach? How do they, you know, tell me, tell me, help me, so that I don't offend anybody. Ah, you're not being an evangelist. You don't offend the thief. You don't offend the robber. You don't offend the smoker. You don't offend the drunkard. You don't offend anybody. You tell me, what's the major thing here that if I say that, the people are going to be offended, and the people will not invite me back. He's not an evangelist. He's preaching for himself. He wants them to have him back. What if Jonah had said, Now, God, you sent me to this Nineveh. And you tell me this message, Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. I know the wickedness of these people. That's why I ran away from obeying this commission before. Now I come. Who are the, you know, the spokesmen and the key leaders in this environment? So I couldn't go and, you know, bend to them and worship them first. And look at their facial appearance so that what I say will not offend anybody. That's not an evangelist. That's not an evangelist. An evangelist comes and he tells us there's only one way to heaven, no two ways, and there's only one Savior, Christ. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. It is Jesus. And you remember the crucified that Jesus and Peter came and said, through your leaders and through your ignorance, you crucified the priests of life. And I come to declare to you that that one you crucified is the only way to eternal life. The evangelists of those days were just straightforward. And thank God your time has now come. Yeah. You are not wobbling for anybody. You're not fearful of anybody. You know, he renews us, he recreates us, he recommissions us so that we can become like Christ in ministry. You know, only 120 at the upper room. When they had all these qualities of Christ, only 120 went forth and they changed their world. We started 1973 with 15 people. What if I were to start again and then I come and I relocate to Kumasi here? <laughs> and then I have more than 120 and we we'll say we're going to be like the early 120. 500, 1,000, 2,000 were here, and we bind ourselves together in the covenant of preaching the gospel. And I stay here with you, and you stay here with me, and I say, go here, go there, go there, go there, and by the grace of God, you go. Amen. Say, I go. I go. And then... We now continue to preach the word to them. If 120 at that time could change their world, I think we can. Yeah. And Ghanaians are not only here. UK find Ghanaian churches there. US find Ghanaian churches there. I've not been to China, but I think if I get to China, Ghanaians are there. Yeah. Ghanaian believers are there everywhere. And if we Ghanaians alone, not to talk of Nigerians, not to talk of Liberians, not to talk of South Africans, not to talk of Zambian, not to talk of all the other countries. I believe we can take this saving gospel to the rest of the world in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, he renews us, he recreates us. Look at Isaiah chapter 43, and I'm reading from verse 7. It says, even everyone that is called by my name, everyone 
called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. He has not created you for the glory of your denomination. Whatever my denomination says, that is what I will do. I want to glorify your denomination. You know, as we look at the growth of the church, we see Martin Luther, and the Lord revealed to him that just shall live by faith. That's all he knew. That's all he knew. What he, for all the people of the Christians in the world, said, this is what Martin Luther had given us, and was we'll stop there. No. When you see what Martin Luther has taught, there is a comma. Because the ministry continues, the, uh, the sentence continues, and then comes John Wesley. And John Wesley, now, it is something in the Bible. The thing had been in the Bible, even at the time of uh, Martin Luther, but Martin Luther did not see that. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so we added that. And somebody says, this is my denomination. The denomination of preaching holiness and salvation army follows that. And there uh, was Samuel Brengle. Uh, they also upheld the message of holiness and sanctification. But the ministry did not stop there because Jesus said tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be in deal with power from on high because ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and the uttermost part of the earth and then so you now have the baptism in the Holy Ghost and the people continue, continue like that and they never knew about the gifts of the spirit the word of wisdom the word of knowledge discerning of spirit and the gift of faith and the gift of healings and the gift of walking of miracles and the gift of speaking in another language new kinds of uh, tongues that is a ministry and in private devotion and also of interpretation and of prophecy what if we just stop here you're preaching, you're ministering for the glory of your limited denomination. But we look at the whole Bible, we look at the Word of God, and the Lord has given us the totality of the Word, and I will preach not for the glory of Martin Luther, the glory of John Wesley, the glory of Charles Finney, the glory of Paul, but now for the glory of God, and the glory of God will descend upon you. The glory of God will descend upon this nation and upon all the nations that are connected. When we know he has recreated us and he has formed us, yea, I have made him. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, these people have I formed for myself. Who are the people? These people. Where are the people? I said, where are the people? They are here. I'm happy to be in the midst of the people that are created for God and God alone. Yeah. And the people that will take the light of the gospel, the power of the gospel, the message of the gospel. And it's anywhere, anytime they wake up in the morning, anywhere they are, I am made for God. He has made me for himself. Another call comes. Somebody is calling you here, and it's different from what God has called you to say, thank you very much. It's something good and something great, but I have a greater thing here. God has called me. <laughs> say that again. And you live in that consciousness and nothing will take the call of God away from you in Jesus name yeah. it says they shall show forth my praise they shall show forth my praise I'm going to look at seven things here again which shows that now 
we are for the praise of the Lord. Because now, he calls us to mastery. And if I'm going to be in mastery, there are some things I need to master. There are some things I need to overcome. There are some things I need to conquer. Number one, fretfulness and previous fearfulness. You know, as we go through life, when we were born, I mean, as a baby, we feared nothing, not even fire. The fire of the candle, we're inquisitive. What is this? Want to put a finger there? We're fearful of nothing. We're fearful of nobody. You know, somebody comes and we look at their faces and, you know, they don't look like daddy and mommy. Why are they different? Then we look away from them and we look at mommy. And once we look at the face of mommy, whoever is there, whoever is not there, all fear is gone. How did we begin to have fear? Because the people were in the world before us. They said, don't go there. This will happen. Don't look at that. This will, will happen. If you see somebody having beard and she shouldn't have beard, that's a dangerous person. If you see this and that, that's very dangerous. If you go to the village, there are some people they call witches in the village. They are not here in our family, but if you go outside our family, that's what you will see. And they began to tell us stories and stories and stories, and those stories brought fear in our hearts. By the time we grow up, whatever college you went to, whatever certificate you have, whatever doctorate paper you take in your hand, whatever research you've done in science or technology, the one they put inside us is still there. Fear, fear, fear. And now we're born again, but the fear they put in our heart is still there. Don't go to that tribe. Don't say you're going to preach there. Leave the other people who want to go and die prematurely. Leave them to go and do it. But you stay here. And you put fear in our heart. But you know, when you will become like Christ, all that fear is gone. What could you do if you had no fear of anything, anyone, any situation in life? What mountain could you climb? What river could you swim? And what distance would you cover if you had no fear of anything, anyone on earth? That time has come. Yeah. The angels surround you. Why are you afraid? Christ lives on the inside of you. Why are you afraid? He died for you and he paid the whole price of whatever you have done. Why are you afraid? Now we conquer that fretfulness and that the previous fearfulness, we conquer them in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, we conquer failure and we conquer past fruitlessness. Failure and fruitlessness will conquer. I conquer. I uh, look at our, our uh, baby here and um, you know she sees men and women, boys and girls walking and then sometime running and she has that desire, that vision. I want to walk I want to stand, and the baby stands up and falls down. But the baby does not give up, stands up and falls down. And out of that failure, eventually that baby is able to stand without falling. When you do something for the first time, it's like you're trying to stand. You may fail, you may fall down. The baby does not give up, you will not give up. Yeah. And then you try again, and you fall down. The baby does not give up. If the baby gives up, that baby will never walk. But you, you know, a little setback. I don't think I'm caught for that. I don't think I can do that. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you will do it. I said you will do it. Yeah. We have to conquer failure and the past 
fruitlessness. Number three, we conquer falsehood and we also conquer preconceived um, falsifications. You know, people look at us and they tell stories about us. And the story goes round and round and comes back to you. When you hear that story and they attach your name to that story, you say, who wrote this? My friend, don't waste your time. You'll never know. Who said this about me? Brother, forget about that. That's what we call preconceived fabrications or falsifications. If you stay with that, you'll never do anything. But you're going to be greater than all those liars. Yeah. And the people who think, if you read this about yourself, you hear this about yourself, will falsify his character, will falsify even his motive. How do you know his motive? But he falsify everything. And when you read that, you say, I'm doing my best, and they make me uh, the worst of all men. I'm doing my best, and they make me the worst of women. <laughs> you know, that will just make you to, to sit down. But, uh, brother, I didn't hear of you anymore. <laughs> I'm tired, you know. No matter how fast you run, how high you jump, look at what they say. From today, you master that one. <laughs> What name did they call Jesus? They said he's walking by the power and the prince of Beelzebub. And they said, don't mind him. He has a demon. They've not said that about you yet. And Jesus went on and on until he got to Calvary. You will go on. Amen. I said you will go on. Amen. If you've written it in your diary. And they said, on this particular day, July 7, 7, 7, 19, whatever, they said,